Afternoon, everyone, and welcome. This is Twist Gaming, where you get to play board games with us. You got it this time. This time. I, I'm going to get it right. Like, I'm going to know it's coming, and I'm going <laughs> to do it correct. You were like on the 20th prepared. time I'm on this show. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for joining us today. We are coming to you live here from Gen Con 2019, bringing you all the board game coverage all week long, as usual. I'm your host, Matt, and right now we are joined with Mike Zellinger from Lone Shark Games. Yeah. How you doing? I'm doing good. It's day two. I mean, we're doing this in chronological order, right? Exactly. Like, you're not going to be, like, surprised that... No. Like, okay. I mean, so, it's live, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It okay. just means so, now we're going to have to have you on every single day there, now. Yeah. <laughs> great. <laughs> uh, I'm sure I won't run out of things to say. Uh, no, yeah, it's day two. Uh, floor is humming. Everybody seems very happy. Uh, tons of people here. Uh, tons of people tons. here. It's ridiculous. It's been, it's been crazy down at our booth. We are um, almost... At, so... Yesterday on the show, we showed off Apocrypha, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we bought tons of Apocrypha, except we're now down to five copies when I left we the booth. Five yeah, copies? We will be at zero when I get back. Wow. Yeah. So it's been a busy show. It's been kind of crazy. Um, so, But it's been great. Like People have really enjoyed coming over to our booth and being you know, at our panels and all that stuff. So it's been good. So, yeah, keeping busy in a good way. And, you know, selling out is a good problem to have. It's a better problem than not ever selling out. Exactly. But it is certainly not fun telling people. Uh, like, I've had some experiences where my products have sold out uh, within the first couple hours of Gen Con. Oof. And then you spend your entire time saying, no, I'm sorry, you can't have my thing. No, I'm sorry, you can't have my thing. <laughs> then why did you come here? <laughs> exactly. Like, I mean, you want to you wanna get close if you can. Yeah, but, yeah. But, eh, it'll be okay. So uh, if, if anyone's looking for Apocrypha right now and they are at Gen Con and perhaps they can't get Seriously, their hands on it. stop watching us. <laughs> Go to booth 2833 right this second, and there might still be a copy there. Where else could they find it, though, potentially? Oh, and they're after? I can get it on our web store. You, you can get go. it in any hobby game shop in America. You can get it from Cool Stuff. You can get it from everywhere. So there's, there's other avenues. Yeah, there. these are not the last copies in the world. <laughs> 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 At least I hope not. Because <laughs> I don't have any more if that's the case. Oh, man. So it'll be all right. It'll be all right. So, Mike, we touched a little bit last night on some of the other stuff that you're working yeah. on right now. And so let's let's just jump into that. So we've got a couple of books on the yeah. table. But yeah, yeah, yeah. What are they? Okay, so uh, there are people out there who probably know me from – you know, the games like Betrayal and Pathfinder and Apocrypha and all that, right? They they probably figured out that I've got a little bit of a devious mind. No. A little, just a, a un poco. Just a pinch. Yeah, just a little bit. Uh, so uh, that expresses itself maybe the best in the puzzles that I design. And so uh, we've been doing a lot lately with puzzles and puzzle games. Uh, so you... Uh, ran into us earlier today on the show floor, um, talking to uh, one of our one of our publishers mm -hmm. about a puzzle game that we're working on. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so we love doing puzzle games. We ran in you ran into us talking to uh, Ignazi from Portal, mm -hmm. and we were talking about our new expansion for the game Detective. So we saw we saw some behind the scenes work, right? Yeah, there. that's right. We were actually planning <laughs> to like I was. We were like, oh, it's this, you know. We were actually planning out. Uh, we the game's written, but you know they they're figuring out details of like what what shape of box is going to be and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> so so yeah, it was really cool. We came up with some crazy ideas. Like this one's gonna if you if you're a fan of the game Detective, this one's gonna blow your mind. I haven't had a chance to play it yet. Uh, Anne has so though, and good. she's just like, "This is amazing." It I, is good. I mean, the, the the interesting thing though is um, uh, the it was written by you know people from Poland mm -hmm. who have this belief about how America works, American law enforcement through watching you know Matlock and exactly stuff. cop shows and <laughs> yeah, stuff like that. So yeah. so. Uh, it was like they came to me and also to Rob Davio and one or two other people and just like, okay, what can you do something a little different? And we're like, yeah, we can do something different. <laughs> so this is different. So I can't tell you anything more about that except it'll be out sometime soon and it's awesome. Awesome. So so uh, so uh, puzzle wise, um, we also put not just put our 
puzzles into games like Detective and Apocrypha, but we also put them into books. And so I brought some along that we can talk about, uh, and uh, people who are interested in them can go to our Humble Bundle mm -hmm. that's running right now, Humble Bundle Puzzles and Puzzle Games. Go there, and you can get copies of them in digital form. Or you can go to our Kickstarter for Puzzlecraft Goes to School and get them in physical form. Very cool. So, but let's talk about them. So, uh, this let's start in the middle here. So, this is the Maze of Games. The Maze of Games is, if I flip this over, everything's cool, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, go for it. So, the Maze of Games is a uh, novel set in Victorian England for about 10 minutes. Um, it, this got this guy, the gatekeeper, mm -hmm. uh, and he is in a, uh, trapped in a book called The Maze of Games in a library in Upper Wol Wolverhampton, England. Uh, he traps these two youngsters, Samuel and Colleen, uh, in w a series of increasingly dangerous mazes. Okay. And the cool thing about the book is that it's got puzzles everywhere. And you, the book is, the pu the pages are in the wrong order. And so you have to solve the puzzles to put the narrative back in the right order and make it make sense. Oh. And then you get, if you do it right, then you get through all these chapters of puzzles and stuff. Yeah, that's, and a, right, that's a thick book. Get to the Joker chapter and meet most important the minotaur he looks like a nice guy yeah well he's wearing my smoking jacket <laughs> really that's my smoking jacket so i modeled for this piece that's amazing um now i don't have the bull horns and the monocle and the axe uh but i do have the smoking jacket and that's what matters <laughs> right like that's the important part of this scene so the minotaur you get by him if you've done everything in the book the right way and if not then you get your heads cut off so, Very good. I yeah. like that there's like a big overarching story to yeah. this too. Because well, when, when some people first hear puzzle book, yeah. they think of those things that they find in the store to keep yeah, them yeah, yeah. when you go on an airplane. No, play. this is a real novel. We, uh, uh, you know, it's plotted out more like a game than a novel. We had, you know, multiple spreadsheets, and we do this thing called the serial killer wall where we put. Uh, we put post-it notes on the wall and we connect t uh, oh, the, the, string, the string, to string between them. We absolutely do that. That's awesome. Uh, or nowadays, actually, now that we have whiteboards, we put the post-it notes on the whiteboards you and we draw, draw lines, between yeah. them so we're not so serial killer. <laughs> um, but, uh, so the difference between serial killers and non-serial killers is string, string over the whiteboard. String. A lot of people to know that. Yeah. A lot of people don't know that. <laughs> um, not that I know any serial killers. Not that I am a serial killer. <laughs> I'll take your word for Probably it. Probably right. <laughs> Probably the best decision you've ever made in your life, however long that may be. So, uh, so yeah. So, um, The Maze of Games, uh, we published in 2014. It took four and a half years to be solved. Oh, wow. It just got solved in March of this year. Um, and then in response to that, so in the middle of that, right, we're like, oh boy, this is, gotta, this is really hard. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we put out the Theseus Guide to the Final Maze, which was a bonus chapter with more puzzles uh, that's sort of a hint book. And we figured, well, that's going to get them over the top right away. Well, that was two years ago. <laughs> and so <laughs> we're like, okay, well, we're probably going to have to spoil it. But then uh, a group of 13 people uh, sent in, is this the answer? And we're like, yeah. And that was it. There you go. <laughs> that was that. So then we put out this book, um, which I'm going to flip through really quickly because uh, I don't want to land on any specific page, is the Keymaster's Tome. And the Keymaster, oops, sorry. Keymaster's Tome is the answer book. But it's handwritten. It's the character's are going through this is their copy of the book oh, that's and so really they cool. write a story about what happens to them they hand draw everything handwritten oh that's really neat yeah and then the 
upper the outer Wolverhampton library system in 2019 gets a copy and puts it on their shelf, right? So this was basically me and my co-designer Gabby bickering with each other <laughs> in print for 150 pages. <laughs> Super fun. So uh, are, you, are you one of the characters then? No. Guess? Well, for that time, I had to be the boorish brother okay, Samuel, okay. which is a pretty easy role for me to play. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Gabby had to be the whip-smart 14-year-old uh, 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 Colleen, which was also pretty easy for her to play. Usually people think I'm this guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, yeah. So we um, – we have a lot of stuff out for the Maze of Games. We have two audiobooks narrated by Will Wheaton. We have oh, um, nice. we have an audio puzzle suite. We have a maze map. We have we had a perfume come out. A perfume. Yeah, you can smell like a library uh, from Black Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab. It's super it's super compelling perfume. But yeah, huh. I was really surprised by it. We have um, soundtrack by Austin Wintry, an album with Paul and Storm and and Marion Call and. Uh, Kirby Crackle on it. We have uh, just everything. Like it's become a a, a giant project that we thought was just going to be a sort of light one off, um, and then I ran a Kickstarter for it, hoping to you know make enough money to print it, and I was given one hundred and seventy thousand dollars for my debut novel, there which doesn't happen very often. <laughs> <laughs> so so anyway, it's super fun. Uh, you can get it from LoneSharkGames.com or you can get it uh, at our booth at. 2833. Very cool. Yep. And then the new book here is Puzzle Craft. Mm -hmm. um, maybe we want to do we want to push these away? Or uh, I could I could move the camera closer Kay. to you. So Puzzle Craft is brand new. Uh, came out just a, a month ago or so, a month or two ago. Um, it is called How to Make Every Kind of Puzzle. It is a uh, book by myself and Thomas Snyder, who is a logic puzzle maker named Dr. Sudoku. That's his real name. That's his, what his mom named him at birth. <laughs> Dr. Um, Sudoku. Yeah, no, it's, I know it's weird, but you know, it's a strange family. Anyway, um, uh, developed by Gabby, edited by Francis, and forward by Peter Sagal of NPR. Uh, wait, wait, don't tell me. Uh, and what this book is, is how to make everything. Every puzzle type. We know about codes, ciphers, word searches, Sudoku, uh, crosswords, um, you know, uh, cross sums, mazes, uh, uh, meta puzzles, puzzle hunts, video game puzzles, escape rooms. Oh, that's amazing! Uh, yeah, and so we we built out every the, a step by step process, and then you get a puzzle with each one, and we described the process we went through to make that particular puzzle. Um, we have a puzzle craft workbook coming out as well for schools that will allow them to uh, go through a puzzle making week long class mm -hmm. uh, to make a, uh, a birthday puzzle basically. And so um, this is brand new uh, from us. It's heavily revised. If you have a copy of the 2011 edition, it's way different. Uh, and uh, it's pretty exciting. We're we're very happy to have uh, have been able to get the rights back and make a brand new edition. It looks beautiful. It's got a cover by Bruce Bernays and Liz Spain that I think is really great. And uh, and yeah, so so it's uh, it's just come out. Um, as I mentioned, we're running a Kickstarter to send it to schools. Yeah, I thought this was an amazing concept. So definitely, please talk. Let's talk about that a little bit sure. because I love the, the the charity work that's involved in this and getting yeah. back to the community. Yeah, I mean, we like to do a major fundraiser every year. Um, so last year we raised about a hundred thousand dollars for for um, various charities, uh, most notably Girls Make Games and Girls Who Code. This year we knew we'd had this coming out, so we decided to run a simultaneous humble bundle. The humble bundle. Uh, puzzles and puzzle games uh, that benefits maker ed and uh, the Khan Academy which are two of our favorite educational charities mm -hmm. and then puzzle craft uh, on the Kickstarter side they don't want us to do charities exactly on that side so so instead we thought what happens if we ask people to help us send this book to school so if you have a school you know you you went to that school when you were a kid or something like that uh, you wished you had in the library Puzzle Craft and the Maze of Games. Mm -hmm. Well, you can make that happen for a new generation. And so 
Uh, we've we've been running that. Uh, it's going to last only two more days, two and a half more days. Uh, the the cool part is we've already got like 300 books going to various schools That's in America, awesome. uh, schools and libraries. So if you out there are interested in getting things that spark kids' imagination into the library of your school or to a local library, um, just go to Kickstarter and type Puzzle Craft goes to school and you will get to see an opportunity to be a part of that. Very awesome. So, Mike, you're you're a pretty busy man from the this sounds is of it. True statement. <laughs> what else is going on that you're working on that maybe you could shed some light on? Yeah, uh, we have some things coming up. Um, we have uh, Hyde Society is my next sort of big box game. Mm -hmm. um, that's with Justin Gary, who made Ascension, and uh, we just had Justin in before. Yeah. Well, did he mention me? He did actually. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Did he mention me well? Oh, of course. Oh, good. Everyone okay. Everyone likes you, Mike. I think you might. Um, he's handsome, too. Uh, <laughs> so, no, we're, we're going to hide society together. Uh, both of our teams are working together on it. Uh, it should be really good. Uh, I haven't revealed a lot of details about it, but I think you can tell from the title that uh, – it's got some it's got some Jekyll and Hyde stuff going on in mm -hmm. it, and I think it's I think that's pretty good. So that that's coming together. We're doing the next um, big project for Basket of Adorables, which is our sort of political action uh, arm uh, that'll that we'll be announcing soon. And then yeah, just getting all these uh, puzzle games together. We'll, we're going to produce uh, one of them. Fa uh, sorry, puzzle and family games. We're going to produce Sausage Party. In its, its sausage party. yeah, sausage party is a, a game about making sausages. Of course, wouldn't be about anything else. <laughs> and uh, and it's super fun. It takes like two minutes to play. It's it's a blast. Um, and so uh, yeah, we got a bunch of a bunch of little irons in the fire. Sounds good to me. So Mike, where can our viewers go to get more information about everything that Lone Shark Games is working well, on? Well, right you can now? go to LoneSharkGames.com. Hey, that's easy enough. Yeah, you can also find us on uh, Twitter at at Lone Shark Games or Facebook at Lone Shark Games. We're kind of at Lone Shark Games everywhere. Like, at no point did anybody in our company think, we could be clever. We could <laughs> really give them a funny name. No one ever thinks that. But it makes it easier to find you. Indeed. That's what that. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, come to our unimaginatively named sites <laughs> and we will happily entertain you. All right, Mike. Thank you so much for stopping by today. Always really a pleasure. Appreciate it. And thank all of you for watching at home. We're going to take a brief intermission right now, but we'll be back in just a few moments here with more coverage from Gen Con 2019. Signing off for now, I'm Matt. Have a good one, everyone.